Hello guys, this is Foodmine Course and in this video we want to add a search box to the project and make it like this. So after finishing this video, you could be able to search for your foods inside the website. For example, you can write pizza, then press enter or click on this search button to find all the pizza on the website. You can have your search even after refreshing the page because after doing the search, your search term will be pushed to the address bar. So watch this video to the end if you like to know how. Okay, this is the roadmap for this lesson. First of all, let's start by adding the search method to the food service from the explorer, src folder, app folder, services and food service. After get all, let's add a method with the name of get all foods by search term. Set a search term with the type of a string as the parameter of this method. And inside it, we just want to return this dot get all method that has a filter based on foods that food dot name dot to lowercase dot includes search term dot to lowercase. I think everything is straightforward, but you may ask why we are using to lowercase here. It is because we want to make both name inside the food and the search term lowercase or it's better to say we want to make them both in the same case to make the search case insensitive because when you search for something like pizza it shouldn't be different from this pizza it needs to find the food let's remove this and we're done with the first step for the next step, we want to add a search route to the app routing module. Let's go from the explorer, click on app-routing module. Here inside the routes constant, we can add our routes. Let's start with the search route, press enter, make a new object, set the path to search slash colon search term. Inside this path, this search is a literal text and anything after the colon is a route parameter. So inside the route, we can get the value of search term to do the search. Very nice. What we need to mention, where is the destination component for this path? We want to set the component to home component. If it didn't automatically import it, you need to import it manually from here like this or you need to press control dot on it okay we have our search route but there is a question where the result of the routes will be shown it will be shown inside something that we didn't add yet the router outlet we need to go inside the root module that is app component html file and instead of putting this app home directly here we need to add router outlet and remove this app home component from here. But if we look at app routing module, we don't see any route to show the home component by default. So we need to add it. We need to add another route with the path of empty string and empty string means the home page of your Angular application and set the component to home component. Then put the comma at the end of it. So we did three things. We added the search route here, the default route here, and the place for showing the routes, that is router outlet. Let's see if we could be able to see the previous results inside the browser. As you can see, we have exactly the same result inside the browser, even after changing home components to router outlet. So it works. Let's continue to the next step. Let's close app component and app routing module. Now we need to show the search result inside the home component. So let's go to the home component from the components, pages, home component TS file. Here we need to listen to the route. For listening to the route, we need an instance of activated route. So let's inject it after the food service, comma, activated route with the type of activated route. Okay. Now we need to listen to the route params by writing activated route dot params dot subscribe and subscribe means anytime when the params changed call the function inside the subscribe let's pass the function inside the subscribe so call it we have a function with the params and with this body we need to say if params 
has a search term inside it. In newer version, we have an error here. It says that property search term comes from an index signature. So it must be accessed with a square brackets search term. So you can have access to it by using a square brackets instead of dots that I don't like. So I remove it. There is another solution that you can disable this error inside the tsconfig.json. Let's open up the explorer. Inside the front end folder, you have tsconfig.json. You need to find no property access from index signature. As you can see, it is true by default. You need to set it to false. Now, if you come back to the home component, we don't see that error. Okay, let's continue. If the road params has a search term, set this.foods equal to a filtered result using this.foodservice.getAllFoods by search term, then pass the params.search term to give us the filtered result based on the search term. But there is a default case. If there is no search term, there should be an else, and we need to put this default foods inside the else. So if you go to the home component, if there is any params.search term, it will filter the result. Otherwise, it will show all the foods. At this point, we need to be able to see the search result inside the browser. Let's check it out. By default, we have all the foods, but if we click on the address bar and write slash search slash, for example, pizza, I can see the result of the search, but we only can show the result. We don't have any button to do the search for us. Now is the time for going to the next step. Close these two and we need to generate the search component. From the terminal menu, click on new terminal. Here we need to go to the front end folder and by writing ngGC, we need to generate the search component inside components folder, partials folder, because it is search box and it is always part of a page. It is not a separate page. Then the name of the component that is search. Press enter. Here we go. Let's check out our component. Inside the components, partials, and search, we can see our newly generated component. Now is the time for adding the search component to the home component. So let's go to the home component HTML file. And at the top of this component, let's add app-search. Let's see the browser. As you can see, we have the search component at the top of our home component. Let's go to the next step. It is adding the required TS data. From the explorer, open up the search component.ts file. Let's add a search term field with the default value of empty string. Then we need to inject two dependencies here. The first one is activated route. And the second one, private router with the type of router. And if you ask why I used private here and I didn't use private here, because when you use private or public or any access modifiers before the name of parameter inside your constructor, it will be accessible throughout your class. But if you don't put it, it will be accessible only inside the constructor. Now let's write activated route.params.subscribe params this is exactly what we did inside the home component what we needed here because we want to read the data from the route and show it inside the search box so we need to say if params dot search term is available set this dot search term equal to params dot search term okay we are done here now that we can read data from the route, we need to be able to send data to the route. For example, if you search for something and you then you press enter, you need to see it inside the route. You need to find your foods. Okay, after ng on init, let's add the search method with the input parameter of term with the type of string that gets our search term. Its return type is void. Then we need to check if the term is available this dot router dot navigate by url to the search route plus the term so you need to do the search based on the term that we pass to the search method we're done with the ts part of search component
let's go and add required elements to the HTML file. From the explorer, open up search component HTML file, make a div, inside it put an input with the template reference of S. These template references are very beautiful. You can have direct access to them everywhere inside your HTML file. So when you use it for a tag, it will hold all the data about that specific tag. The input type should be text. Its placeholder should be search food mine. And there's a special event called keyup.enter. We normally search with enter key. So anytime that we press the enter key and release it, this event should call search with the value of s.value. And if you say, what is this s.value? This s coming from this reference. On the next line, we need to add a button with the click event that does the same as search s.value. Close the button and its text should be search. So here we go. This is pretty nice, but we forgot something. We're just doing the search, but we are not showing the search value inside the input. So let's add the value attribute equal to search term. Let's press enter here and here to make them easier to read. Now let's see it in action. Inside the browser, as you can see, on the route, we have meat here. And inside the text box, we have meat. What if I write pizza here and press enter? Very nice. It works really well. Now we have pizza here and here. Now that we have our complete search functionality, it's the time for the next step. That is adding required CSS styles to the search component CSS file from the explorer. Select search component CSS file, then start with the first style that is for div. Its display should be flex, justify content should be center, margin top should be 3 RAM, and its margin bottom should be 1.5 RAM. Next style should be set for the input. Input, its border radius should be 10 RAM from the top left, zero from the top right, zero for the bottom right, and 10 RAM on the bottom left. So we have this input that has border radius on the left side and is flat on the right side. Its border should be none, its height should be three RAM, its width should be 20 RAM. Background color should be hashtag F1, F1, F1. Its padding should be 1.2 RAM. Font size should be one RAM. Font weight should be 500 and outline should be none. We are done with the input. Let's go for the button. Div button. Its color should be gray. Height should be 3 RAM. Width should be 5 RAM. And font size should be 1 RAM. Border radius should be 0 for the top left. 10 RAM for the top right. 10 RAM for the bottom right and zero for the bottom left. Its border should be none too. And its background color should be hashtag E72929. Its color should be white. Its opacity should be 0 0.8. And outline should be none. And for this button's hover effect, we need to set its opacity to one and its cursor to pointer. Let's see it in action. As you can see, we have this beautiful search box, but its font size is a little bit small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's go to the input selector and inside the font size, let's set it to 1.1 RAM. Now it's easier to see. Very good. Okay, this was for this video. In the next video, we wanna work on the tags bar and put them here. You've been watching Code with Nasir and I hope to see you next time.